today on Dustin to Win. The blood was crying out. The blood was crying out. The blood was crying out. Freedom, access, forgiveness, favor, peace, joy, prosperity, power, salvation, protection, comfort, wisdom, safety, soundness, long life, and the blood was crying out for our healing. Healing is part of the blood covenant. Welcome everybody to Destined to Win. I'm Frank Santora, and I'm so excited about today's message. Today I'm gonna to be talking about something that we all need in our life from one time or another, and that is healing. The message challenged our church, and I believe it'll challenge and inspire you as well. Check this out. Our text is found in the book of Genesis. If you don't know where the book of Genesis is, you need some spiritual help in a real serious way. Genesis chapter number four. I'm gonna begin in verse number one. The Bible says, and Adam knew Eve, his wife, and she conceived and bore Cain and said, I have acquired a man from the Lord. And then she bore again, and this time she bore his brother Abel. Now watch this. The scripture goes on and it says this. It says, in the process of time, it came to pass that Cain brought an offering of the fruit of the ground to the Lord. And Abel also brought of the firstborn of his flock and of their fat. And the Lord respected Abel and his offering, but he did not respect Cain and his offering. He only respected the offering of Abel, even though Cain brought something too. Why? Because Abel brought the offering that God asked him to bring. What's the offering that God asks us to bring? God asks us to always put him first, doesn't he? First fruits, first fruits, that's our tithe. That's what God expects. What did Abel do? He brought the firstborn of the flock, the tithe. That's how we should come to church, prepared to give God what he wants. Doesn't mean we're not saved if we don't give God what he wants. Doesn't mean God doesn't love us if we don't give God what he wants. But God respects when we obey him. When we obey him, God is able to release blessing in our life. Now watch this. When we don't obey him, look at what the scripture says next. Why are you so angry? Why is your countenance falling? If you do well, will you not be accepted? And if you do not do well, sin lies at the door. And its desire is for you, but you shall rule over it. Now Cain talked with Abel, his brother, and it came to pass when they were in the field that Cain rose up against Abel, his brother, and he killed him. And then the Lord said to Cain, where is Abel, your brother? He said, I don't know. Am I my brother's keeper? Imagine this. He gets sarcastic with God. God pays him no mind, and he gets to the heart of the issue. He says... What have you done? The voice of your brother's blood cries out to me from the ground. This morning in our series, Healer, as in Christ the healer, as in Christ the one who went about doing good and healing all those who are oppressed of the devil for God was with him, as in Christ the one whose touch healed, whose words healed, whose clothes healed, whose cross healed, whose spit healed. Everywhere Jesus went, he healed. Jesus healed everyone who was asked him to heal him. He didn't say no to one person. Matter of fact, when people came to Jesus and said, if you want to, you can make me well, Jesus said, I want to. In our series, Christ the Healer, today I want to talk to you about this statement contained in the scripture, the blood still speaks. The blood still speaks. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, would you speak to our heart? Would you make your word real to each and every one of us? In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said, Amen. you may be seated. Our text today is more than the recount of the first murder ever committed. It's more than a story of two brothers and their sibling rivalry. It's more than the account of the offspring of Adam and Eve. Our story is the foreshadowing and representation of our redemption that Christ purchased for us from the hands of the enemy. You say, what do you mean, pastor? Well, what I mean is in our text, Cain is a type of Satan and Abel is a type of Jesus. Cain is a type of Satan and Abel is a type of Jesus. Let me show you why. Cain slew Abel. Satan thought he was slaying Christ on the cross. 
He didn't slay him on the cross. He thought he was slaying him on the cross. The reason why I say he didn't do it is because we know that he couldn't have unless Christ willfully laid down his life. Nevertheless, Cain slew Abel. Satan thought he was slaying Christ. Cain rebelled against God's standard. Abel submitted to it. Satan rebelled against God in heaven. Jesus submitted to God in the garden. Cain was a tiller of the ground, which is a type of us trying to fix things that are cursed all by ourselves, by our hard work. Abel was a keeper of the sheep. Satan tries to deceive us into thinking that we can fix ourselves from our sin with hard work. But Jesus is the good shepherd of the sheep who laid down his life so that our sin can truly be fixed. Cain didn't understand how precious a first fruits blood sacrifice was to God. And so he gave God whatever he wanted. Abel knew and he brought God the first portion that was a blood sacrifice. Satan didn't understand how powerful the blood of Jesus was. And so he thought, I'll just slay him. Jesus knew how powerful his blood was. And so he willfully shed it on Calvary for you and I. Cain is a type of Satan. And Abel is a type of Jesus. And this morning what I want us to focus on is the number one reason why Abel is a representative type of Jesus. And it's in the statement that God made to Cain when he said, What have you done? The voice of your brother's blood cries out to me. Cain killed Abel and Abel's blood continued to speak even after his body was gone. Jesus left this earth. But I want to declare to you that even after he left this earth, the blood that he spilt on Calvary's cross is still speaking today. And it's shouting out, according to the scripture, better things than the blood of Abel. Listen to what the scripture says. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 22. But you have come to Mount Zion and to the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, to an innumerable company of angels, to the general assembly and church of the firstborn who are registered in heaven, to God the judge of all, to the spirits of just men made perfect, and to Jesus, the mediator of a new covenant, and to the blood of sprinkling that speaks better things than the blood of Abel. The blood of Jesus is still speaking. The blood of Jesus is still speaking. The blood of Jesus is still speaking. Abel's blood cried out for punishment, vengeance, get back, pay back. But the blood of Jesus cries out for forgiveness and mercy and grace and justification and freedom in Christ. The blood of Jesus cries out better things than the blood of Abel. And the blood of Jesus also cries out healing. It also cries out healing. And that's what I want you to see today. That the blood is where we can hang our hat on our believing God for healing. And in order to understand this, you and I need to understand a term that is very, very strange to us. It's a term we don't use very often. And the term is covenant. Covenant. It's a strange, it's a foreign word. It's something that we don't use in our everyday vernacular. We don't understand covenant. We understand contracts, but our understanding of contracts is that contracts can be broken for legitimate reasons. And so if you enter into a contract and, and you feel as though the contract is not going the way you want to, you look for a loophole in the contract. But covenant is much different from contract. Covenant is forever. Covenant can never be broken. It is serious, serious, serious. Serious, serious business with God. It's a huge word to God, and it is what the entirety of Scripture is based on. Matter of fact, in Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse number 9, listen to what God says. He says, therefore know that the Lord your God, He is God, the faithful God, who keeps covenant and mercy for a thousand generations with those who love Him and keep His commandments. Notice what the Bible says. Covenant is forever. Somebody says, no, Pastor, it says a thousand generations. See, this is where we're at in our day and age. We look for when God won't do his word instead of when God will do his word. It doesn't mean that after a thousand generations God stops. It's using the terminology to say forever and ever and ever and ever and ever. Covenant is forever. God doesn't break his covenant. God doesn't alter his covenant. Psalm 89, verse 34, my covenant will I not break 
nor alter the word that has gone out of my lips. In God's mind, covenant is forever. Once you make a covenant, once he makes a covenant, it's everlasting and everlasting. That's why Jesus said, and lo, I'm with you even until the ends of the earth. The power of covenant. If we discern the power of covenant. Remember what Jesus said? The Apostle Paul actually said it in 1 Corinthians when he was talking about communion. He said this, he said, many are sick and die prematurely because they do not discern the body and the blood of the Lord Jesus. What's he mean? It means they don't understand the power of the covenant. Not just here, but here. Why? Because we are culturally taught the opposite of what covenant is. And that's why this teaching is so important for you to understand what you have in the blood covenant with Jesus. Everything that the Father has will be yours. Everything that the Father has will be yours. Now, some of y'all ought to be, ought to started to shout already. But for those of you that didn't catch on, can I fill you in on kind of how this works between us and God? When we cut or when God cut the covenant with us through Christ, first thing he did was he questioned. He looked out over eternity and he said, is there any human being that is possible to uphold the terms of the covenant without breaking them? And because he knew our human frailty, because he knew that you and I were prone to mistakes and prone to failure and prone to go back on our word and prone to not follow through, God couldn't find one of us to cut the covenant with. And so God took us out of the picture and God said, I'll make the covenant with me, myself, and I. And so instead of making the covenant with us, God cut the covenant by becoming one of us and God the Father cut the covenant with God the Son so that we would not be able to break the covenant. So that the covenant would never result in us being punished for breaking the covenant. God took us out of the picture so that the covenant would be upheld. That's the questioning. Second thing that happened in our covenant with Jesus is the great exchange. 2 Corinthians 5, 21. For he made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might become the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. The exchange. What's the exchange? Jesus gets the sin. We get his standing with the Father. Jesus gets the junk. Jesus gets the foul-ups. Jesus gets the mess-ups. Jesus gets the hang-ups. Jesus gets the hook-ups. Jesus gets the addictions. Jesus gets the poisons. Jesus gets the hate. Jesus gets all of the bad stuff. All that stuff goes over on Jesus. We give him all that. We give him our sin. We give him our shame. We give him our sorrow. What does he give us back? He gives us back his right standing with the Father. The exchange. In the exchange, we got the better end of the deal. Then there was the cutting of the covenant. There, the blood was being spilt. Do you know Jesus didn't spill his blood on the cross for the first time? He spilled his blood in the garden for the first time. Then he spilled his blood when they put a crown on his head. Then he spilled his blood when they plucked out his beard from his face. Then he spilled his blood when they whipped him with a Roman cat and nine tail across his back. This is before the cross. Then they, he spilt his blood when they put nails through his hands. Then he spilt his blood when they put nail through his feet. Finally, he spilt his blood when they thrust a spear into his side. And every time his blood was being spilt, guess what was happening? Covenant was being cut. As the covenant is being cut, guess what was happening? The blessings were being pronounced over the blood. All heaven was declaring what belongs to mankind now that this covenant is being cut. It was declaring access 
into the very presence of Almighty God. How do we know that? Because the Bible says that the veil of the temple, while Jesus was on the cross, was ripped in two. What was the veil of the temple? It was the thing that blocked the common people from coming into the presence of God. But when Jesus was on the cross and the blood of the covenant was being spilt, the blessing of having direct access to God the Father in heaven for all mankind was being pronounced over the covenant. But not only was that blessing being pronounced, access and freedom and grace and, you know, forgiveness was being pronounced by the high priest himself. Because, see, Jesus was the high priest as well as the sacrifice. And what did he say on the cross? He said, Father, forgive them, for you know not what, for they know not what they do. What was Jesus doing? He was, in, even on the cross, he was acting as the high priest. And he was declaring the blessings that belong to us as a result of the covenant. Every time they sin, Father, forgive them. It's the blessing of the covenant. The blood was crying out. The blood was crying out. The blood was crying out. Freedom, access, forgiveness, favor, peace, joy, prosperity, power, salvation, protection, comfort, wisdom, safety, soundness, long life. And the blood was crying out for our healing. Healing is part of the blood covenant. It's not just a promise. It's a blood covenant promise. Psalm 103, verse 1. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all your iniquities and heals all your diseases. Notice, forgiveness and healing. Same sentence, why? Same covenant. Same sentence, same covenant. James chapter 5, verse 14. Is any among you sick? Let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith will save the sick and the Lord will raise him up. And if he has committed sins, he will be forgiven. Forgiveness of sins and healing of sicknesses. Same sentence, same covenant. Isaiah chapter 53, verse 4 and 5. Surely he hath borne our griefs. Carried our sorrows, yet we esteemed him, stricken, smitten of God, afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions, bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. Sins, forgiveness of them, healing of disease, same sentence, same covenant. But pastor, not only did the high priest have to pronounce the blessing, but the high priest had to pronounce the curse over the blood. How does that work? Here's the good part. I said, here's the good part. See, God doesn't want to curse any one of us. And because God doesn't want to curse any one of us, but God knew that a curse had to be pronounced over the cutting of the covenant for any time that you and I would break the covenant. And so guess what God did? Instead of pronouncing a curse on us, God put the curse on us on Jesus. He put the curse on Jesus. When he became sin, the Bible said God turned his face from Jesus. God looked away. He was separated. He died. Death is the punishment for for breaking the covenant. The Bible said he became the curse for us. For cursed is everyone who is placed on a tree. Why did he become the curse for us? So that the blessings of Abraham might come on the Gentiles in Christ Jesus. God cursed Jesus so So God does not have to curse you and I. Listen to me, listen to me. God cursed Jesus so he wouldn't have to curse us. I want to conclude by ending where we started. After Abel died, his blood continued to speak. God told Cain, what have you done? The voice of your brother's blood cries out to me from the ground. His blood, his body was gone, but his blood was still speaking. In the same way, when Jesus' body was gone, he sent it into heaven. The blood is still speaking. Watch carefully. Hebrews chapter 9, verse 12. But Christ came as a high priest. What does a high priest do? Mediates the covenant, pronounces the blessing and the cursing. But not just pronounces. Mediate means also distributes. He also gives out. And he gave himself to curse So the only thing left he's got to give out is the blessing. After Jesus was resurrected, Jesus appeared and then ascended. And when Jesus ascended, he ascended into the the presence of God the Father with something in his hands. 
You never go before the God with nothing in your hands. When you come before the king, you bring the king a gift. Jesus said, I got the gift of all gifts for you, Father. And Jesus walked into the heavenly throne room of almighty God, the judge of all heaven and all earth. And in his hands, in a bowl, the way I picture it, was the blood that speaks better things than the blood of Abel. And Jesus took that blood and he put it at the feet of the Father. And then he pointed to the blood. And when he pointed to the blood as the high priest in the Holy of Holies, he started declaring the blessings of the covenant that belong to all God's kids over the blood. He pointed and he said, heal their will because of this blood. Heal their self-image because of this blood. Heal their bodies because of this blood. Heal their minds because of this blood. Heal their work because of this blood. Heal their walk because of this blood. Heal their marriage because of this blood. Heal their children because of this blood. Heal their heartache because of this blood. Their addiction because of this blood. Their homes because of this blood. Their insecurities because because of this blood their hearts because of this blood their souls because of this blood their spirits because of this blood their wants because of this blood their hates because of this blood heal their sin the blood the blood speaks the blood is still speaking today it's crying out right now heal 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 it's the blood speaks the blood speaks I hope you were inspired and challenged by today's message. We all need healing from time to time in our life. And if you want to dig deeper into everything that we talked about in this message, my announcer is going to come on in just a moment here to tell you how you can get the entire message unedited and uncut. I hope you enjoy. Are you living an underprivileged life? If you have been stripped of your self-worth, beaten with sickness in your body and your emotions, stricken with poverty and losses all around you, don't lose hope yet. You were meant for so much more. The world tells us that sickness, financial instability, rocky relationships, stress, and more are just a part of living. So we learn to just embrace the disappointments of life instead of looking at their benefits. But you don't have to stand for the harassment of the enemy. God wants you to have the life of privilege he has destined for you. Everything he has is yours if you need it. The blood of Jesus has given you access to obtain all the blessings of God for your life right now. And today, Pastor Frank wants to help you receive those blessings. He has developed teachings devoted to assisting viewers like you with overcoming and defeating the hardships of life. He wants to equip you with the skills necessary to obtain the health, wealth, and spiritual vitality you deserve because Jesus has already purchased it for you on the cross. With your donation of $20 or more to the work of Frank Santor Ministries, Pastor Frank will send you the full unedited version of his powerful series entitled Healer. This dynamic three message series contains life-changing revelations that will motivate, inspire, and ultimately compel you to embrace the healing God has for you. In He Is My Healer, Pastor Frank will expose the tricks of the enemy to keep you in bondage to sickness and help you overcome it. In The Blood Speaks, he will empower you to receive the blessings accessible to you through the covenant of God. And in Watch Him Work, Pastor Frank will help you to seal your God-ordained healing that is available to you. This empowering and inspiring CD series will transform your thinking, rejuvenate your understanding, and quicken your spirit enabling you to recognize, receive, and grasp the divine healing that is obtainable for you. In addition to this incredible CD series, Pastor Frank wants to also send you the Blood Covenant Confession Card. Utilize this extraordinary confession card to verbally pronounce the blessings of God over your life. Speak those blessings aloud and declare them into the atmosphere and over your life. So that's the three message series, Healer, plus the Blood Covenant Confession Card for your love gift of $20 or more. It's time for you to walk in the authority God has given you to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy to stop his attacks against you. 
You are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus, and your time is now to walk in your godly destiny. Operators are standing by. Call now. As many of you know, we all need healing from time to time in our life for all different sorts of things, spiritual healing, physical healing, emotional healing. Before you leave the show today, I wanna pray with you. I wanna invite God to touch your life and heal you in whatever way that you need to be healed. And so let's pray together right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come to you and we thank you for our covenant that we have with you, a covenant that includes healing. And right now, whatever area of healing is needed in the lives of the people that are watching, I pray that you touch their lives in a mighty way. In Jesus' holy name, I pray. And everybody said, Amen. As you saw from the TV show today, Covenant has an exchange of gift, and there's a little bit of a portion of the show which we weren't able to show you today of the message that I preached that we want to cut away to right now. Check this out. Once you make a covenant, once he makes a covenant, it's everlasting and everlasting. That's why Jesus said, and lo, I'm with you even until the ends of the earth. That's why there's nothing that you can do to ever shake Jesus in your life. That's why he's faithful even when we are faithless. That's why when you and I make our bed in hell, even there, Jesus is there. Because when you turn your back on Jesus, Jesus cannot turn his back on you because he made a covenant with you. He cannot break his covenant can't do it. Maybe you want to be in covenant with us. Maybe you want to help us tell the world that with Jesus, they're destined to win. Would you consider sowing a gift into this ministry or becoming a partner? We'd certainly appreciate it. We know God will bless you for it. Until next time, remember that with Jesus, you are destined to win. If you're in the New York City area, we invite you to connect with us at Faith Church. Our worship experiences are for you and your family to encounter the presence of God, meet some new friends, and discover God's purpose. Each week you can expect dynamic praise and worship and a relevant creative word from Pastor Frank Santora. Here at Faith, we're committed to the entire family. We have fun and engaging age-specific services designed just for your kids that'll have them begging you to go to church. We even created an environment called Champions Club so our special needs families can experience God in a meaningful way. Our student and young adult ministries are aimed at inspiring young adults to live with a passion to change their world. At Faith Church, we believe with Jesus, you are destined to win. That's the driving force behind everything we do. So plan a visit, make new connections, and enjoy what faith has to offer. We look forward to meeting you. If you're in the New York City or Connecticut area, we invite you to visit us at one of our locations or join us online every Sunday at faithchurch.cc live. On behalf of Pastor Frank and from all of us at Faith Church, God bless you, we love you, and we'll see you next week.